shifting trends of COVID-19 Twitter sentiments with respect to voting preferences in the 2020 election year of the United States. Megan Dolman, Jake Motley, Hong Chin, Wen Junxie, Li Yang, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee, United States. Presented by Hong Chin. Hong Chin is an associate professor at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. Also had a joint appointment with the Department of Biology, Geology and Environmental Science at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. He previously worked at the Spelman College, Tuskegee University, and the University of Rochester. He completed his postdoc training and PhD at the University of Chicago. Introduction In the U.S., disparity is reported between measures taken by Democratic state leaders and the Republican state leaders. Democrat state leaders tend to take more immediate actions based on suggestions by federal health organizations as opposed to Republican state leaders who were more likely to take less restrictive measures based on the cues of the Republican sitting president at the time. For the United States, the red and the blue states refer to states whose voters predominantly choose one candidate from the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, respectively. We chose Twitter, a popular social media, for this project. Twitter sentiment analysis has been previously used to track the public opinion in the 2012 presidential races. A sentiment score is between minus one and one, representing perfectly negative and perfectly positive sentiment intensity, respectively. Here we want to investigate if it is possible that analyzing the COVID-19 Twitter sentiment in online discussions of the politicized issues in different areas of the country would give insight into the local political leaning when it comes to the voting in the 2020 presidential election. Our goal is that the information gathered here may have apl applications in politics, allowing for the ongoing analysis of the online discourse of issues as a more efficient and less selective method of gauging constituent interests rather than poorly individuals and that this result can potentially be used to understand and hopefully re-evaluate the role of politics as it is leveraged even in the face of a major emergency such as the global pandemic of COVID-19. We passed geotactic tweets from a data set of COVID-19 tweets collected based on selection of key terms. The collection of this data started on March 20, 2020, at the beginning of the state issuing stay-at-home orders and the lockdown procedures. We ended our analysis on the date of the general election, November 4, 2020. We partitioned the geotech tweets into each state in the U.S. and then proceeded with average daily sentiment analysis. Here are a few examples of COVID-19 related tweets and their estimated sentiment values. We presented, uh, we presented two positive, one negative, and two neutral examples. Twitter sentiment analysis was performed using Vader sentiment analysis, a tool designed with social media posts in mind in order to better attune the expected input. Veda ut utilized natural language processing, machine learning methods, and five generalized heuristic rules to assign each text a sentiment score between minus one and one. We estimate the daily average COVID-19 tweet sentiment intensity for each state in the United States. Uh, we then import it into Jupyter Notebook using the Pandas package. 
the dates were parsed the indexes to generate the data frames. Popular voting data was obtained from a public online nonpartisan source. This data was imported and indexed by the state. And for this study, we parse out only the quantitative popular voting data and which party was called for each state. Result. In order to examine the potential association of COVID-19 tweets with voting preference, we perform a two-week sliding window analysis. In each two-week window, we estimate a correlation coefficient between the average COVID-19 tweet sentiment intensity and the percentage of votes for Democrat, Republican, and other parties. We visualize this two-week sliding window correlation result in a heat map. A positive correlation is represented by the intensity in red color, whereas a negative correlation is represented by the intensity of the blue color. The center of the color represented is near gray, corresponding to a coefficient of zero. Because votes for the other party at 1.8% are an extremely small fraction, we expected that Democratic and Republican votes would correlate with the average COVID-19 trade sentiment in opposite ways. This can be seen in the presented figure. When examining the correlation result from March to November, we can observe a shift that is occurring in middle April to late May of 2020. In order to highlight the relative change over time between the blue and the red state, we estimate the ratio of average COVID-19 trade sentiment intensity in the blue state versus that in the red state in each sliding window, plotted as a dashed green line in the presented figure. To illustrate the differences between blue and the red state, we added a gray horizontal line corresponding to a ratio of one in this figure. We can see that from March to May, the average sentiment intensity of COVID-19 tweets was generally more positive in the blue state than that in the red state. The ratio of blue versus red state sentiment intensity also declines during the summer of 2020 and generally stay below the gray horizontal line of one from the summer to the election day. So there is a shift over the year of this Twitter sentiment between red and the blue state. Here we compare the heat map and the ratio plot to show the relative ch shift of the Twitter sentiment between the blue and the red state. Overall, we observe weak correlation between the average Twitter COVID-19 related Twitter sentiment and a popular vote in two week intervals and the change gradually become opposite for the Democrat and Republican voting preferences. At the beginning of the pandemic, the blue state had more positive Twitter sentiments about COVID-19. But later on, the Republican states tend to have more positive COVID-19 Twitter sentiments. We are aware there are potential pitfalls and caveats in the data set and the uh, current analysis. We like to thank the funding agency and support for this study.